Hi friends, with the launch of the Gaiden event, I thought it would be fun to look at the evolution of thematic events in Apex Legends. We're going to go through a journey in time in this video. A journey that will hopefully bring back some nostalgia for you Apex Legends OGs, and help you to remember the good old days. Let's go back, back to the start. It's June 2019, the first ever thematic event launched called Legendary Hunt. It wasn't like the thematic events we have today. Being season one, it was quite a basic event. Feel the nostalgia by seeing this trailer? It should bring back some memories. I think the most memorable part of this event was the Elite Q. This was basically our first incarnation of Ranked. Of course, being a thematic event, it also brought some popular skins, although they were kind of basic compared to what we've had nowadays and the prize track was also quite simple. Also, there were nowhere near the volume of cosmetics as you would see these days. After this came the Voidwalker thematic event in Season 2. This was all about Wraith, and brought our first real lore cinematic stories from the Outlands. Technically, Watson's launch stories from the Outlands was the first ever stories from the Outlands, but that wasn't really fully cinematic like Voidwalker. Similar to Legendary Hunt, Voidwalker didn't bring lots of skins, but one of the most memorable skins that it did bring was the Voidwalker skin, which I think is one of the best skins ever released, or at least it certainly was at the time. Fun fact, the skin was originally called Ghost Wraith, but was changed to Voidwalker. Ghost Wraith related to a bit of lore between Watson and Wraith. You can also see from the challenges and the free rewards that they were both kind of basic. They even gave two rewards for the same gun, the G7, which was a little bit strange, but I guess back then there weren't many weapons, so they kind of had to double up skins for the same weapon. Do keep a lookout through this video though, because you'll notice how the free prize tracks change over time. Of course, we got the Sing Labs Town Takeover. This was the second town takeover we had in the game, after Octane's Town Takeover had been introduced in the previous collection event. Oh yeah, and we got Armed and Dangerous, which is kind of funny because that's the LTM we have right now. Of course, back during the Voidwalker event, there were way less snipers and shotguns, so no charge rifle, which was really nice. Now we step into 2020 and jump to Season 3 for the Grand Soiree Thematic Event you can see they really started to step up the skins, and instead of having one or two chaser skins, they had a bunch of decent skins that you could get your hands on. And if you think about Voidwalker having 7 skins, the Grand Soiree doubled that with 14 skins, although to be fair they weren't all specific event themed items. You also get to see in the prize track, they move from a challenge based system to a points based system for you to earn those rewards, which you'll see is a common theme running through all thematic events from this point onwards. One of the best things about the Grand Soiree were the number of game modes that it brought to the game. Personally, I really enjoyed third person mode just because it was so fun and unique compared to what we were used to, but unfortunately we've not seen that come back. Dummy's Big Day Out was another fun mode that Grand Soiree brought, and if I recall correctly, this was what they used to test out Mirage's ultimate. I mean the one we have today, because back then his ultimate was kind of different. Moving on to Season 4 for the next thematic event, we had the Old Ways, and this was one of my favourite events, and also one of my favourite stories from the Outlands, because Bloodhound's story is just such a great, deep story, and I thought the cinematic told that story really well. With the Old Ways event, we got Bloodhound's Town Takeover, and back then, this town takeover felt really unique, because Bloodhound's Trials gave us the first real experience of PvE in Apex Legends thanks to the Prowlers. Fun fact, this is the last town takeover that would arrive with a thematic event. Every town takeover from this point onwards all came with collection events. The free prize track wasn't that amazing, but it did give us one legendary in the prize track, and this was the first time since Season 1 we actually got a free legendary legendary in a prize track for a thematic event. The skins were kind of just okay in this event, but obviously the young Bloodhound skin was the best skin, although the voices from the past Wraith skin was a popular one at the time, but this might have just been because Wraith was so overpowered, literally everyone was maining her. 
Do you remember the first time you set foot in Bloodhound's Trials? I do, and this definitely brings back lots of memories. Fun fact, there wasn't a specific LTM during this event, but Duos was added as a permanent mode with the Old Ways thematic event. After the Old Ways event, it would be two seasons until we would see another thematic event. Bring on Vital Fright in Season 6. This was a Halloween event, and that made it kind of spooky. We had Shadow Royale for the first time, which you'll be familiar with, plus some creepy skins. The classic Bloodhound Pumpkin Head, the Crypto Dracula skin, and of course the Caustic Clown skin, and this one still creeps me out today every time I see it. There were a bunch of other bundles you could get your hands on as well, but in all honesty, most of the skins in this event were just recolours rather than anything new. The free prize track wasn't that great either, no legendaries, although the Nessie Charm was kind of cool. Moving on, the next event would come a season later in Season 7. At this point it's Christmas time, so obviously that's was the theme of this event, and that meant bringing back Winter Express. The skins in this event, again similar to the previous Halloween event, were kind of mostly recolours, although there were a few new skins, mainly for the new legends such as Loba and Revenant. As we jump into 2021, and we look at War Games in Apex Legends Season 8. This is probably the most buggy event on this list. They announced 5 game modes. The first mode, Second Chance, had to be replaced by armor regen after 8 hours due to bugs. Auto banners was then turned off, and killing time was saved for a later date to prevent further issues, meaning out of the 5 modes announced, only 2 really worked properly. Fun fact, there were going to be 7 modes released originally with the War Games event, but this was reduced to 5. Apart from these modes, there wasn't really anything amazing in the prize track, and the skins weren't that great, at least in my opinion, and I did hear they didn't sell as well as other events as well, so I guess that's saying something about the War Games event. Stepping into July 2021 and Season 9, we had Thrill Seekers as the next thematic event. If you thought War Games overpromised and under delivered, then Thrill Seekers under promised, and to be honest, they kind of under delivered. And that means personally, this is one of my least favourite events. Despite having three weeks worth of prize trackers, there was hardly anything good in them. Plus, the skins weren't that great. Apart from the Pathfinder and Revenant skins, there wasn't really much else to get, and that's because there were really only four skins released during this event. The only other noticeable thing that came with the Thrill Seekers event is the new Overflow Arenas map. Arenas wasn't that popular at this time, and I don't think many people like this new map. Anyway, hopping on to the next event, it's Halloween 2021, and we got the Monsters Within event. This event marked a change in the structure of thematic events. It was the first time we had a structure of 40 event cosmetics that would be available and then enter the normal loot pool afterwards. Plus, we also got the introduction of the thematic event packs with this event. Previously, we only really had event packs for collection events, and the previous thematic events only just had items which you would buy straight up. And I feel like this upped the ante from thematic events just being smaller little gap fillers to an actual event. Although that did mean you then had $160 worth of skins and not really much extra free stuff. Oh by the way, it was the first time you could use crafting metals on thematic events as well, because previously you could only use Apex coins in other thematic events. Fun fact though, you couldn't actually buy these individual items with Apex coins like you can now. Your only options were to use crafting metals, store offers, or thematic packs, which I think was a bit of an oversight, but obviously in every thematic event since Monsters Within, you have been able to use Apex coins for individual items. Of course, the benefit of these items going into the normal loot pool means you can still craft them to this day, unlike previous thematic events where you would essentially have to wait for them to come back to the store. We also got Shadow Royale back as an LTM during Monsters Within, plus the introduction of Encore as the arena's map, and this was our first map set on Boreas. Oh, and one last thing, the crafting cost for these items when they went into the normal loot pool after two seasons were reduced, and in fact, they're still half price today in terms of crafting metals. 
we're almost caught up to real time, just a couple more events to cover. And we're now in January 2022, with the Dark Depths event during Season 11. The Dark Depths event followed on from the Monsters Within event, you could see they had a number of cool skins in this event, much like the Monsters Within event. Plus we also got a new arenas map. Sadly there was no LTM with this event, so it was essentially just an event to spend your money. And that leads us on to the penultimate thematic event before we get to the Gaiden event. Stepping into Season 12, it's April 2022 and we have the Unshackled event. Another chance to get some solid skins, plus we got an LTM in the form of Flashpoint returning. Now these last three events have kind of presented the same kind of structure, and by this point you were able to buy individual items with Apex coins, or craft them, or use Unshackled thematic packs. Although there was no reward for getting all 40 items, of course that's something that's changed recently with the Gaiden event, where you now get the Bangalore Prestige skin. This brings us up to the Gaiden event today, which is happening right now, so you don't need me to tell you what's in it. Hopefully this brought back some happy memories of the good times you've had in Apex Legends, and maybe it gives you an idea of how these thematic events have evolved over time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.